Hello everybody and welcome to another video of the continuation of the GM Chevy Bolt EV recall saga. This afternoon was a little bit of weird uh, a little bit of weirdness for me because I had some things that I had scheduled today but they essentially got pushed to next week. So I had some time to look into uh, some of this uh, some of the posts that have been done over the last uh, few days and I thought I would share my thoughts. On what I found with you so far first things first if you look behind me there is a laptop there um, that says GM's two billion dollar Chevy fire recall cast shadow over electric vehicle market at first I thought to myself does it really I mean I don't consider myself a genius or any by, by any means of the word but I do consider myself semi-informed, and, he, and here's why I say that. I believe that the, the EV fires um, may be overblown. What do I mean by that? Well, there is a, a, a person by the name of Sam Abul Samid, who's the lead auto analyst for Guidehouse Insights that says seven Chevy Bolts have caught fire, excuse me, or about 0.006% of those on the road. So out of all the cars, six thousandths of a percent caught fire. By comparison, the National Fire Protection Association has said that 212,000 gas and diesel vehicles caught fire in 2018 alone. That's about 0.07% of those on the roads today. That's huge. That, that's a big difference. Um, I mean, being able to count on one hand how many cars go up is, you know, it's pretty significant when you figure that almost a quarter of a million vehicles went up in flames of the gasoline and diesel type in 2018. I'm not here to bash um, gasoline or diesel owners or EV owners or whatever, and I'm not here to change your mind about anything, okay? Let's get that clear. I'm not here to convince you that you must be in an EV, you must be driving a Chevy Bolt EV, and everything else is stupid. No, 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 no. Let's be clear. I've had, I've had comments in, in some of the previous videos that I've shot where I've actually been told, you should have gotten a Tesla. No, I shouldn't have. Why? Because I don't like Teslas. The response to that, when you can go back and see, the response to that was, you don't like Teslas or you don't like Elon. I don't have any issue with Elon. I don't have any issue with the Tesla. I don't, I don't care. This is a preference of mine. You're, you're asking for me to give you a tangible answer of why I don't like something. Listen, if I don't like, you know, this particular brand of sanitizer, then I'm not gonna get it. It doesn't matter why. Maybe I don't like the color. Maybe I, maybe I don't like the smell of it. I happen to love this one, by the way. But the point I'm trying to make is what one person loves, what one person cares about, you know, is still valid. You can't dismiss that person because they don't like what you like or they don't do what you do. You know, that's the beauty of the human race. We are all individuals. We all have this thing inside our head called a brain that allows us to make decisions that are valid for ourselves. And we try to make the best decisions that we can to further our posterity. If you have kids, if you have family or whatever, and they look up to you, you want to make the decisions that make sense for yourself, but they also reflect positively to those who look up to you. Okay, I digress. I'm gonna go back to this actually uh, because there's another paragraph here that I wanna read and I'm gonna read this one verbatim because this one, 
um, I, I wasn't quite sure of the details and I did research this and I have it here in front of me and I want to share this. This goes back to the um, EV fires. Other manufacturers, including the EV giant Tesla, have found themselves in the news lately because of battery fires. In December, a home in suburban San Diego was destroyed when a Tesla Model S caught fire as it was charging in the garage. Investigators blamed a faulty thermal management system designed to keep the battery pack cool. I should have gotten a Tesla. Yeah. Because my odds were that much better. I don't know how many Teslas have gone up. I don't care. I, I have no drive towards Teslas. I, I just don't like the car. I've test driven one. I've looked at one. And... You know, and trust me, I love my displays, I love my gadgets, I love my computer stuff, I love it. But I just don't like the Tesla. Anyway. I'm sorry about these tangents, first of all. I just feel like the comments section, you know, even though everybody's entitled to share their opinion, I feel like sometimes I, I'm put in a position where I have to justify, you know, who I am and what I do. Well, consider yourself educated on who I am and what I do. The Chevy Bolt EV has done more than I could have ever expected an EV to do. I've had lithium ion batteries. In fact, I have a box over here filled with lithium ion batteries that refuse to charge. And they're three months old. The fact that I've had this car since Thanksgiving of 2020 and it continues to charge and it continues to drive under my beatdowns pretty much daily is a testament to the vehicle. It doesn't take away from it. That said, I've, uh, I've mentioned this before, I will always stand by GM, I will always stand by the Bolt EV and I will continue to do so and um, I just figure that a company that's willing to invest billions in a platform, regardless of what their history was with EVs in the past, something obviously changed. Something changed for the better. Somebody realized, you know, somebody had an oh damn moment and they resolved whatever internal issue it was to not just prototype the car, but they produced it massively and they got it worldwide. You know, in other parts of the world, uh, I think in Europe it's marketed as the Opel Astra. You know, I'm not here to, I'm, I'm really not here to educate people either. I feel like that's not my job. My job is to share my experience. I'm not an EV professional. You know, I'm not an, I'm not an electrical guru that knows the ins and outs of these vehicles. There are other channels on YouTube that can give that information to you. For me, I'm just an owner. I'm just a, a, a field engineer, you know, a network engineer that travels every day for his job, whether it's to this office or from this office to client sites. I take my Bolt EV everywhere. I charge it every day, sometimes twice a day, you know? And for me, it's a privilege to drive the Bolt EV because I know that I'm doing something good for the planet no matter how small, you know? I understand that the Bolt EV fires are a tragedy. And if you are an owner who has suffered loss because of a Bolt EV fire, then my heart goes out to you. It really does, you know? I don't think anybody deserves to have to go through that. I don't think anybody um, deserves to live through a disaster like that. But you know what? I'm gonna share a, a pretty graphic image, um, and this was close to home for me, because it happened very close to where I live, and I'm gonna bring it up here, and I'm going to, I'm gonna show it to you. I think I, I may have closed it by accident. Oh no, here it is. 
this was on the side of the freeway today in Santa Clarita, California. That is a diesel RV with a gas powered car behind it, both in flames. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know what caused it, but there is the video of people driving by and recording it. Nobody's immune. Nobody's immune. No car manufacturer is immune to potential issues with their vehicles. All of that said, when you take the keys to your car, you take your keys and you open the car door, you get into your car, you close the door, you put on your seatbelt, you set the air conditioning and your music to whatever you need it to be, you use CarPlay or whatever, you put that car in drive or in first gear, whatever you have. The minute you pull out of your driveway, you are committing to yourself to a sequence of events that you have no control over, okay? None of us know what our future holds. I may not be here tomorrow. Something might happen to me tonight. You know, risk management is a big part of life. And you have to decide how much risk you're willing to take in your daily life. But beware, don't process that too much or you'll fall into a feedback loop where you'll end up a hermit and you'll never leave your house. And trust me, that's just as debilitating as the potential of getting hurt while driving any car on the roads. GM's in the news, we know that. There's no denying that. They've even shut down their factories as a preventative measure for any future issues. There's no options right now for Bolt EV owners. We just kind of have to sit, stand by and wait. But that's exactly what we're doing. But at the same time, we're using our heads. We're listening to GM. We're understanding what they're saying. About a week ago, I did a video. Maybe it was further back. I, I can't tell. But I did a video about how there's a group of Chevy Bolt EV owners that are implicitly ignoring the recommendations. They're charging their vehicles to full. They're draining them all the way down. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're not following any of the guidelines. That is not acceptable risk management. There is nothing that can be said to justify that. Now, I'm not going to say that there's no reason to charge your car to 100% because I've done it. I've done it recently. But to do it in a matter that's ignorant to the recall, saying that, oh, it's not going to happen to me. I can do whatever I want. Well, you're entitled to that. But I hate to say it, but you're just exposing yourself a little bit too much to the reality of what could be. None of us know what the state of our battery packs is. There's no way to inspect it from the outside. It's not like opening the hood of your car and being able to see what the issue is and then closing your hood back down if there is no issue, you know? Again, I'm not here to bash those people. I'm just saying that there's two sides to every coin and there's typically more than one side to every story. Um, I have three computers with six different stories about this recall and I wanted to share this with you, my community, uh, because, you know, if you're a fellow Bolt EV owner or if you're in a similar situation with uh, another manufacturer like the, like the Kona EV, who's 
manufacturer of battery was also LG Chem. We all have to stick together, man. There is no reason for us to kick each other in the neck. Why? What's that going to do? I mean, in the end, it might relieve some steam, but at the same time, you're doing it at somebody else's expense. You're doing it in a way that could potentially hurt somebody else. And that's not good, you know? I'm not one to censor people's comments. I'm not one to, you know, take offense to somebody's personal opinion. But I'm asking you guys to look out for each other. You know, if you're posting down below or you're replying to somebody else's comment on one of my videos, please be courteous to that person and understand that they're not here to be judged. They're not here to be, you know, bashed in any way, shape or form. It doesn't do anything positive for you and it only adds to an already tense situation, you know? Anyway, guys, I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you for, uh, uh, if you're still here, thank you for sticking around with me. I really appreciate it. Um, feel free to continue the conversations down below. Um, like I said, there hasn't been much change on the recall, but uh, as I see stuff, as I read stuff, I'll be sure to follow up with it. And I appreciate you guys wholeheartedly. And thank you for joining me. In the meantime, have a good evening and a better weekend ahead. Take care.